First and foremost, this must be said, Charles Darwin never wrote Survival of the Fittest. Rather, in his November 1859 book, On the Origin of Species, he wrote, quote, It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change, end quote. Furthermore, social Darwinism has little to do with evolution by natural selection. Rather, this discredited idea has been used by many people to justify racism, imperialism, and conservatism. It is rooted in ignorance, not science. In this video, I am referring to evolution by natural selection. I use this phrase to distinguish today's topic from personal evolution, that is, personal growth, and evolution by other means. Here, I refer only to the scientific topic of evolution by natural selection. Darwin's dangerous idea contained two main points. One, diverse groups of animals evolve from one or a few common ancestors. And two, the mechanism by which this evolution occurs is natural selection. Evolution is driven by the demand by every organism for limited materials, such as nutrients, physical space, light, and so on. Because of genetic variation underlain by mutations, some organisms are better adapted than others to physical conditions. As a result, these better adapted organisms hold a competitive advantage over their counterparts. In the face of the ability of all species to produce excessive numbers if they do not face environmental constraints, more offspring are produced than can possibly survive. Darwin correctly identified genetic variation and the adaptability to change as key components underlying not only survival of individuals, but also the survival of individual traits contained by some individuals. These two ideas, diverse groups of animals evolved from one or a few common ancestors, and the mechanism by which this evolution occurs as natural selection, have been subjected to rigorous testing. To say they have held up is the most profound of understatements. These ideas have been elevated to the level of theory, a word commonly misunderstood by people without a competent understanding of science and the underpinning philosophy. So what is a theory to a knowledgeable scientist? In common parlance, the word theory is used to refer to something that is speculative. That's how courts of law continue to use the word. Scientists with a decent understanding of philosophy, on the other hand, know that theory means something completely different. A theory is a carefully considered explanation for observations of the universe constructed using the scientific method and bringing together many facts, concepts, and hypotheses. Making this distinction is a big deal. Consider, for example, that what knowledgeable scientists call theory would be called facts in a court of law. There's a big difference between speculation and the integration of facts, concepts, and hypotheses into a compelling, conclusive statement. Weather forecasters make predictions, but they rarely generate theories. While we're on the topic of terminology, hypothesis is another commonly misunderstood term. A hypothesis is not merely a statement that might or might not be true, or a prediction, such as, quote, I hypothesize there was once life on Mars, end quote. Rather, a hypothesis is a candidate explanation for an observed phenomenon. As I wrote in my April 2001 paper, Teaching and Learning the Scientific Method, published in the peer-reviewed American Biology Teacher, quote, A hypothesis is a potential reason for a pattern. Scientific hypotheses are candidate explanations for observed patterns. That is, a hypothesis is a potential reason for the pattern. Demonstration of a pattern often generates the question, what process causes that pattern? Providing a definitive answer to this question requires formulation and subsequent testing of potential explanations for the observed patterns. That is, it involves hypothesis testing. My primary point here is that the theory of natural selection by evolution is not merely something cooked up via speculation. Rather, the theory of natural selection by evolution is, for all practical purposes, fact. Tremendous evidence would need to be uncovered to challenge this theory. Doing so would represent a complete reassessment of the field of biology. Let's consider a recent example published in the renowned journal Science. Ivory poaching and the rapid evolution of tusklessness in African elephants was written by Shane Campbell-Statton and six other scholars and published October 21, 2021. 
The paper concludes that pressure from the human slaughter of elephants during the 20-year period of the Mozambican Civil War has become a driver of selection. Note that this is not natural selection, rather it's quite unnatural. Nonetheless, the pressure has led to selection against elephants with tusks. In short, slaughtering elephants for ivory has led to a population of elephants largely without tusks. Tuskless elephants have a much higher survival rate than elephants without tusks. As one result, a population of elephants largely devoid of tusks has emerged in response to a 20-year war. This is surprising because these elephants typically live 50 to 60 years, about four times the length of the war. In short, evolution by natural selection can proceed quite quickly. Selective pressures push certain genes out of the population and ultimately out of the species. In doing so, these selective pressures lead to the extinction of species. This result can occur very quickly, and not merely for elephants. Once habitat is lost, every species faces extinction in the near term. There's more, of course. First, human-caused extinctions of birds on islands obviously cause a reduction in diversity. The important part of this story is that invasion of these islands by other non-native birds does not offset the loss of biodiversity resulting from the native birds that have gone extinct. In other words, losses resulting from extinction are not compensated by introduction of other species. This, according to a paper in the renowned peer-reviewed journal Science Advances, titled Loss of Functional Diversity Through Anthropogenic Extinctions of Island Birds is Not Offset by Biotic Invasions, written by Farron Sayal and seven other authors, and published November 10th, 2021. There's even more, of course. A paper in the peer-reviewed journal Paleontology suggests that rapidly evolving species are more likely to go extinct than their slowly evolving cousins. In other words, fast evolution is a fast path to the nowhere known as extinction. This study was written by Jorge Herrera Flores and three other colleagues and published November 10th, 2021. I in include links to all the articles mentioned in this video in the blog post at guymcpherson.com upon release of, of this video. The idea of near-term human extinction is not something I heard about during COP26, which wrapped up last week, although I admittedly paid little attention to the liars prom prominently featured at this annual party. The overall message seemed virtually unchanged since COP1 occurred in March of 1995. You must change. You must conserve fossil fuels. There is no significant threat to life on Earth, and you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Those who participated in the 26th Annual Conference of Parties, with an emphasis on party, bear no responsibility. As my new colleague in Ohio says, quote, to anyone who views climate change seriously, the meeting is a complete laughingstock, end quote. I agree. Sadly, the joke is on us, and it's not funny. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.